This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Uh, the very next day, you have a three minute and 27 match, 27 second match on TV at the Irish McNeil boys club in Shreveport, Louisiana. This is October 27th, 1982. And you're on the, uh, the B side to Mr. Wrestling number two, uh, Mr. Wrestling number two for some of our younger listeners. They may not know he was considered like wrestling royalty here, right? This is probably one of the bigger names in the business you'd wrestled at this point. What was that like? Oh, uh, was- as, as you can imagine, I was starstruck, you know, and, and as I, as I got to know him and it was not there, uh, but I ran into him a couple of times prior to that, when I was doing, you know, TV matches in Atlanta and stuff, I would see wrestling too, uh, sitting in the locker room. And I don't mean this to be a negative towards him. It's just comical. And how he could have not saw it is comical either. I don't know. But first time I saw him was in Atlanta, and I went down with Ted Allen to just do jobs on TV. And I look over, and there is Wrestling 2 sitting there in his tights and his mask. His glasses are on the outside of his mask, and he's smoking one of those big curvy Inspector Clouseau pipes, reading a book. You got that visual in your head? I do. (laughs) And I think I just busted out laughing. I I don't remember, but I think I had to run around the corner. It was the damnedest thing I ever saw. But guys in those days, they didn't take off their masks in the locker room. Most of them, not the ones in the States. But uh, I got to know him a little bit. Uh, later on, uh, not during this time with Watts, because I was just there doing jobs. Actually, when I was in Pensacola, he came in for some shots and Randy Rose and, uh, uh, and his, uh, girl took Aaron and I and wrestling two and his wife out on his boat down in Pensacola. So we had a, we had a couple of days of boating down there, but backing up, uh, to the Watts, you know, I was just a guy that had just just a handful of matches and here's wrestling too in the ring. I wasn't really prepared for that knee lift because what it turned out to be is other than a knee in the chest, which I thought was smacking, it was him smacking you in the back. Yeah. And man, did it sting. So I'm sure the sale on that was probably a little goofy, a little wonky. So the idea is, um, I think it was called the million dollar knee lift. Is that right? It was to me the the idea is that's his finishing maneuver. And, um, you know, I guess we would see years later in the UFC, like a Muay Thai strike, you know, some sort of knee from the clinch or whatever, but this is before fans are familiar with all that here in America. So it's just a, a quote unquote regular knee lift. So you'd be bent over. He's coming at you. Bam. Here comes the knee, but it would get this fantastic sound. And of course, these days, leg slapping is a pretty controversial thing for a super kick, but he's not going to slap his leg. He slaps the shit out of your back. That's where the noise comes from, right? Yes, sir. And, uh, it was sounded off. It cracked and his timing, you're watching the knee. You're not watching the slap on the back. And that was some more of the magic of what we did. Yeah. It was like everything else that is a lost art. He never let it out. You, if you didn't just know from knowing, you would never know that that crack didn't come from him kneeing you in the head or kneeing you in the face. You know, I know I'm being silly here, but I don't want to ask the obvious. Does he tell you ahead of time, hey, kid, uh, here's the way the finish works? Or do you just feel it and know, okay, I got to figure this out now? Uh, I think the referee came over. He said, you know, wrestling two uses that big knee. You know, you're okay with that? I said, yes, sir. I'm, I'm fine with that. And they just take it a point blank. That means you know what you're doing. I got you. And uh, he just, you know, he kicked me in the guts or something. Or I think he hit me. No, I'll tell you what it was. I think he hit me. We have to look at the tape. But I think he hit me with a backdrop or something. And as I was always selling up, he was winding up and setting up. And that was your drama. And and the fans always got behind it. So as you turned into him, there was a big knee. Boom. 
I know you mentioned a minute ago something about Aaron. I just want to add context. That's in the future. At, at this point, you have not yet met Aaron, right? No, no, absolutely okay. not. I skipped ahead a little bit, and I'm, we'll get there eventually. But um, I didn't get to know two uh, at all. They were in separate locker rooms. I had the match with him. We moved on. I think that was probably the only time I worked with him. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.